But what's interesting about this is, out of the four players that have been eliminated, Gus Hansen has knocked out three of them. Yuanda has knocked out one. So between them, they've knocked out every player at the final table. And now they're going to come down to see who knocks each other out. Gus inherits the button. And here we go. Whoa, look at this. Hansen has picked up two kings on the button, playing heads up. Just a monster. And he raises the pot up to 95,000. He comes in for 95,000. Well, that's huge, a huge hand, and he and he doesn't play it sneaky. But now look at Yuanda. He's got ace jack. He also has a big hand playing yeah. heads up. How much is it for me? This is going to be interesting to see what happens. Gus has raised this pot. He didn't slow play the kings. The question is, is Yuanda going to call or play back over the top? He's thinking about what to do. I don't think there's any chance he's going to fold. Gus keeping his eyes down, doesn't want to give many tells. No, but I guarantee you one thing. He's hoping he does something like raising back right here when he's staring at two kings. Nice. Gus has got to love this. Look at Gus looking at him. Mm -hmm. Look, I guarantee you inside he's jumping with glee right here. They're playing for some big stakes. The difference between first and second is about $280,000 difference and the championship title here. Don't want to make a mistake. I'm all in. Gus re raises all in in it's one second. He didn't wait one moment. He just moved all in quickly. Whoa. He's got to figure he's in front. I mean, he didn't even hesitate. He didn't try to trap him. He didn't do nothing. He just said he was all in. Just quickly put all his chips in the pot. And now Yuanda. He's got to figure out, is he bluffing me, putting the move back on the top of me? Now, at this stage, Juwanda still has well over 800,000 left. So he's got plenty of chips to play the tournament if he folds this hand. But if he calls and loses, he's out of the tournament. Now, yuanda has got a tough decision here. He's seen a lot of bluffing by Gus. He's got a hand that's not so bad. It's normally a good hand heads up. I call. It looks like he's going for it. John, you want to call, goes all in. Gus has set him up earlier with having junk all the time that he almost has to call. He said he's calling. Tournament director Jack McClellan is counting out the chips. God, Here this, we go. This is happening really fast. I never expected Gus it. Gus feels good right now. We thought it might last a long, long time. It took us forever before we lost one player. And now when we get heads up, it's only going to take two pots. The tournament could be over unless John Yuanda gets lucky and outdraws Gus Hansen in this pot. Johnny Wanda smiling. Will he still be smiling after he sees Hansen's cards here? If Gus wins, he's a champion. If John wins, he's got the chip lead. Look at that look on Yuanda. Oh, no. Powerful blow to the stomach for Yuanda. John knows he's overplayed this hand now. He's got ace jack. He's up against two kings. Gus is about a 70% favorite to win this pot. Boom, oh. he flops the top set. It comes king 10-4. Gus way in front. But now you want to catch a queen to win this pot. That's true, an inside straight throw. He's got four cards to catch to win this pot. Here we go, a five comes off. He needs a queen. He's a major underdog right now. Otherwise, Hanson will be the tournament champion. The river is a seven. Not gonna do it. Gus Hanson has won this tournament. He had to sweat it out. Gus Hanson played magnificent poker. Gus Hansen from Copenhagen, Denmark's our champion, runner-up John Yawanda. A dramatic finish to this great tournament that we've had. Gus Hansen wins the Five Diamond World Poker Classic here at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Okay, Alex Boxen now with Ace-10, the chip leader. 180 to go, Mike on the button. 520. Going to 520. And now Sean, mayor of Tiltsville with ace nine suited in the small blind. He's got about three million here. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Don't do it, son. Don't do it. All in. No, he's not going to. He's going to go all in. I call. Oh my God. Ryan behind him with ace jack calling. Whoa. I mean, not only is this a huge call, but he did it so quick that the other two players in the hand have to go out and assume Ryan is really strong. Sean, 
he will be eliminated. He's behind at this point. Look at the swagger from Ryan. Yes. The Vegas kid's stunned. Just nice call, man. Thank you. Five cards to come. Ryan, a big favorite to knock out Sean Perry. I'm freaking out here, Vince. I genuinely am. I'm freaking out over this hand. What? They give you the money. Don't you see a king? Like they're giving you the money. Man, it's not a strong hand, the man. It's time, time to hit a, time to hit a nine, man. Hey, what time is it? You. My time. <laughs> I don't know, don't celebrate yet. Here we go with the flop. There's a nine in Jack! The nine was on the ground, but the Jack was right behind it. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Torture Sean Perry a little bit more. Uh, That's pretty sick, huh? Nine, was it nine in the window? Yeah. What are you trying to do to me, girl? That was more of a, like a heart attack for me than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, comparing man. the pain. Here we go with the turn. Oh, it's a five of clubs. Oh, baby. Mikey D with the 500, Foxen with the 100, hooking it up. What a chain of events. It's just nine and then freaking Jack. Sean Perry, huge underdog. Put an ace out there so it looks pretty, yeah. Was the chip leader throughout, and now he's down to the last card. Can he pull it off? It's a five! Ryan scores the knockout of Sean, making a tremendous call pre-flop. Sean, who came in as our chip leader at the start of the final table, unfortunately unwinds. Action on Bill Jennings from Florida. Non-professional player, has a very strong ace-king. Well, Bill's played very conservative at this final table, but we know he's going to play this hand. Went all in on that prior hand, and it paid off. But this time, gonna just double it up. 2.40 to go. Ben Yu with a queen jack won't play. Kevin out. How much? And now Jake Schwartz with an ace jack. How much did you start the hand with, approximately? 2.5. I'm all in. I call. Whoa! Jake goes all in and gets called. Yeah, Jake in a terrible place has pushed. Little did he know how strong Bill's hand was. Well, little did he know how many chips he's got, Vince, because Bill has more chips than he announced, which was 2.5 million. It's close. I mean, I should have asked for an exact. I should have. Yeah. He just said 2.5. And now Jake's realizing it, and maybe it would have made a difference. Well, it may have, Vince. He said 250. He knew even if he lost the pot, he'd still have half his chips left, but now he's not going to have near that amount. Maybe Jake can outflop him here. Let's see. No, it's a king. Nine, six, two clubs. King's there for Bill Jennings. Well, great flop for Bill. How do you like your chance right now? Pretty good? Pretty good. Jake now has to catch two runners to win this pot. Pretty big dog at this point. Bill well out in front to double up, and it's a five on the turn. So Jake Schwartz drawing dead here. Now we're going to find out exactly how many chips that Bill Jennings had. And it is more than 2.5 million, and Jake is not a happy camper about it. Are you kidding me? It's like 3.5. And that's why I made him break it down. I wouldn't even call him 100%. I just want to know what it was for future, just in case he tries to say that again. That's like 3.5. All right, I guess, I guess it's cool to angle at final tables for hundreds of thousands hey, of dollars. I, Jake, Jake, I looked at the screen. It said 2.45 the last time the I looked. The screen's obviously wrong. Hey, ask for a count then. I did. You said 2.5. Well, then I count it out next time. Stack your chips like a normal human being. Well, that's why I stacked them that way, so you'd make a bad decision. All right, we're cheating these days. It's cool. Action's going to be back on Carlos. He looks down at a queen, six of clubs, just going to call with it. Limps in on the button, and Kirk with an ace-10 says, give us a flop. A little surprised he wouldn't raise there, Vince. Oh, deceptive play by both players. Oh. And look at this flop. Carlos with two pair, queens and sixes. But Kirk has flopped top pair and checked. Carlos has checked two pair right behind him. Oh. Both players trying to trap each other. Yes, they are. Here comes the turn card. The three of diamonds comes off. So two hearts, two diamonds on the board. A little too dangerous for Kirk. He's going to reach for chips here. He's betting a million dollars. And quickly, Carlos bets two million. He's made the minimum raise here. He's got queens and sixes. 
Oh, the double up raise, so scary when that happens. Usually a guy has a big hand when they do that, and of course we do know that Carlos has the big hand. Now, well, Vance, if you're sitting in Kirk's seat, you're not putting Carlos on an ace here because you have one and he didn't raise before the flop. You wouldn't put him on a pair, even if threes and sixes here. You figure he would have raised pre-flop if he'd had a pair. It's hard not to think you don't have the best hand in this situation. You assume your opponent's either got some kind of straight draw, perhaps a flush draw, maybe just one pair. What do you do with two aces here? I'm going to raise. Kirk raises. I'm all in. I call. All well, in. here we go. Kirk is going all in. He's been called by Carlos. And this could do it, folks. Carlos Mortensen well out front here. Nice one, Carlos. The crown goes on his head if he can dodge an ace or a 10 or a three on the pair, river. Pair aces. He knows he is very close to this victory. The only player ever to take the World Series main event and perhaps our WPT World Championship. History in the making in the poker world right now, down to one card. Well, you're right about that, Vince. It's on his fingertips here. He's just got to dodge one card to become a two-time WPT champion and accomplish that amazing double you're talking about. Something we may not see happen for the next 20 years. Here it comes. Oh, wow. It's a 10. Kirk Morrison has outdrawn him on the river here to win this pot. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Shocking. A seething card there on the river. And Vance, if you're Carlos Mortensen, as hard as he's fought all night long, to come back to this stage, to finally take the lead, to get your money in with the best hand. The tournament's over if you can just dodge one of three cards. Wham! Sorry, Mingo. Not all in, he's not all it. <laughs> I have to work hard. I have to work harder now. Carlos actually chuckled a little bit. He said, let's play a little more. Now Lady Maverick looks at her hand. She's got a big one, ace queen. Come all in. And she goes all in for 1.7 million. Andrew Robo. Our chip leader looks at an ace king. I call. And he's quickly calling. Oh, well, Andrew has Vanessa dominated. This could shatter the dreams of Vanessa, who desperately would love to win a WPT title. Andrew up on his feet. The crowd going nuts here. And of course, Maria Ho and Tiffany Michelle, good friends of Vanessa Russo. Two good poker players in their own right, rooting their lady friend on, but she needs luck. And she hits it on the clock as the queen comes up. There you go. Vanessa out in front with two queens. It's not over. Vanessa is very stoic. She is not flinching though, Vince, until those last two cards come out. Well, Andrew needs to catch a king to take the lead. A Jack will give him an ace high score. Well, drag it up, Jack. Jack. Vanessa is professional enough to know she doesn't celebrate too early. But she's out in front of the Queens. Here comes the turn. It is a king. Unbelievable. Tough luck for Vanessa Russo right there. That is Heartbreak Hotel for Vanessa right there. It's like she thought it was coming. And a fully breaks her leg down the stretch. This is awful. Now she needs the miracle. Well, Antonio and Andrew, good friends. Antonio trying to hide his eyes, didn't want to see the bad beat at the river in case it would come up. Vanessa needs a jack for the split, a queen for the win. She gets a queen. Oh my God. She spiked the queen. Unreal. The lady at the table called a lucky lady on the river. She's going to make for some good TV. What an incredible hand. Let's go to the table. Back on Justin with the button. And King Jack. Well, that's a good hand in a three-handed poker game as well. Let's see what Justin's going to do with it. He's just going to limp in and call here on the button. Something we haven't seen yet out of him. Faraz Jaka out. And now Alex Gomez has a pair of eights here. It's snowman. Now Vince, I'll be very surprised if he didn't make a move here with two eights. What you got? Three. I should have started with about 3.2. He's probably wondering, wow, Justin hasn't limped in yet. Is he trying to trap me with a big hand? And he's going to find out because he is going to raise it. He's going to make it 575,000 to go. He wants to get paid off here a little bit. 
He's got a pretty decent hand pair of eights. Now look at this. You know, if you've ever seen Phil Ivey play poker, he's got those eyes, that laser look. Justin plays with him all the time. He's trying to develop Phil Ivey's eyes. You can tell it. Look at the way he shoots him over there at his opponent. Now, Justin, don't forget what Mike Mattis had told you. Don't get crazy. You've got some chips. Come on. Oh, he's getting crazy. Very cool. Well, so much for Mattis Al's advice. He's gone all in. So again, another race situation. Just a moment ago, we saw Alec Corelli get eliminated with the two over cards. All right. I got it. I got it. Can't We've got the same exact scenario this time. Justin Smith has the two over cards. If he loses the race, he'll be out in third place. Now, what does that mean? What a key for you. I got huh? news for you, Vince. If you live in Ohio, if I double up this, it's that starts out O H I O. That's what they do in Buckeye Land. Over after you win this pot, buddy. I think they were in a Brazilian ballet at one point. <laughs> but now they've gone to poker. Let's see what happens. Here's our flop. Now yeah, flop comes a seven three. Bear the board. Bear the board. So far, so good for the Brazilian. Right now, he's just got to dodge a king or a jack. Or two running cards to make a straight. Well, a queen comes off. This gives Justin four more outs. A 10 would now give him an ace high straight in the victory. So Justin Smith must catch a king, a jack, or a 10, any other card, and the Brazilian will eliminate yet another player. Alex knows he can do it if it just pairs the board. Can he escape? Oh, it's a 10! Back to back double ups by Justin Smith, growing out both times, Vance, to stay alive. And look how excited he is, his fans, his friends. Wait a minute, Vince. Something's wrong out there. We'll operate it on it tomorrow with the million. Yeah, there's something very wrong. He's doubled over. He's, no, he's really in pain. Yeah, it snapped. What the? This is no bluff, let me tell you. Poker injury. I told you this, I told you this is an uh, injury sport. <sighs> Okay, they like say that? that poker is not a sport, but this is like... Well, this is pretty serious. People are rushing to Justin's side. I'm really hoping it'll be okay. I'm, 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 I mean, I'm able to play. I'll, I'll play it out. Tournament officials have stopped the clock. We're going to find out what's going on, and we'll be right back right after this. I want to get some ice. I just snapped my ACL. Do you want to elevate the leg? Right, action is going to be on EPJ. Race. With a 7 8 of spades, is going to raise again. It comes in for 200,000. Sitting right behind him with a pair of nines is Mads Anderson. Let's see what he's going to do here. Free race. Well, he is coming over the top with the two nines here, though. Six and a quarter. Protect that mid pair. And he's going to make it 625,000 to go. Into Daniel Negrano, and Daniel's picked up a big hand as well. Ace King with the button. Well, Vance, he's in position. Now, we know he's got a lot of chips, but many pros, when the pot's raised and re-raised in front of them, would lay down Ace King here, but not Daniel Negrano. He makes the call. And now it's on Jim Hanna. Well, he has the same hand as Daniel. Remember, the pot was raised, re-raised, and called. He's got to lay it down. Too many players and Joe Hashem going out. Action back on EBJ. Call. And he is making the call, Mike. I don't blame him here, Vince. It's a huge pot in there right now. 1.6 million, costing 400,000 more to call. So he does make the call. So three-way action here, over two million in this pot. Tasty little suited connector, seven, eight of spades, up against nines and ace king. Everybody holding their breath right now. And the flop comes queen, queen, 10 with two hearts. No real help to anybody. Action's on EBJ. He's going to check his eight high. Now the man with the pair of nines, Mads Anderson. He checks. Well, Vince, he's scared. Not only because the guy raised in front of him, but Daniel called two bets behind him. Well, Daniel has an inside straight draw, but here we go with the turn. They all checked. Now the four hearts pops off there. Come on. EBJ with the eight seven of black cards is going to move in here for a million dollars. Absolute zip and pip. Vince, if Mads Anderson calls him here, his opponent's drawing completely dead. Well, how would you call with a pair of nines at this time? You right. got a big pair out there, you got three hearts, and he's going to lay it down. And now it's up to Daniel. But Daniel does have the fourth heart and an inside straight draw, and it's a big heart, the king of hearts. What do you got? Not, not what do you have in your hand, but what do you got? Well, I mean, I'm thinking you probably hit, like, the queen or something. 
You got like scared three queens, it looks like. That heart, you didn't like it too much. Daniel's gonna soon realize there's three million dollars in the pot. Cost him a million dollars to make this call. But as it is, he's just mm -hmm. got ace high. That's ah, okay, I can see it. Whatever. The guy who raised pre-flop has moved all in it's in front like of you here. Good or not, you know. Let's see here. If he puts his opponent on something like two sevens or two eights, perhaps he'll make this call thinking he can win the pot with an ace, a king, a jack, or a heart. Actually, you know what? Count it. <laughs> I think you got three queens, so maybe I can like suck out on you. I can't beat him. But. Daniel is off this time. He thinks he has three queens, but why wouldn't you? Well, how would you like to beat EBJ right now, Vince? Your tournament life's on the line. You moved in for your last million. You're up against certainly one of the top poker players in the world who's the chip leader at this final table. And you got to maintain your poker face right now. He's got 1,045,000. Is that right? Sound good to you? All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. One million. When Daniel starts talking, put a bag over your head. Don't talk with him. Well, Vince, look at the poker face of EBJ now. He answered, Daniel, you don't have to. I've played a fair amount of poker with Daniel Negrano. And my advice to everybody would be, if you're playing a pot with him, don't talk to him. It's just a little bit over a million dollars. It's a huge pot. This would be an amazing call. Well, this would be an all-star call, Vince. No doubt about that. Or EBJ saying to himself, please go away, please go away. Daniel, please go away. Do not call me. You're not full, right? No, you're not. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe you have these. I'm definitely beat. <laughs> but I have outs, maybe. Eh, it's only a million. Oh, no, wow. he's doing it. What a call by Daniel Negrano. Beautiful. And that thud you just heard, folks, was EBJ's heart hitting the floor. Got eight high? Oh, I can beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Tickle Pink. You are sick. You are the sickest, <laughs> you are the sickest puppy. Okay, don't give him an eight or a seven. That would be pretty sick. Now, folks, you talk about one of the great calls in poker history. Whether or not Daniel wins this pot, that took a lot of heart to make that call right there. A king eye flush draw, a gut shot straight draw. He could be drawn dead. Daniel sized him up perfect. Since he was bluffing and went after him. It would be a bad beat if eight or seven goes. Yeah, yeah. Seven, so and the look on EBJ's face says it all. He's got a spike of seven or an eight that's not a heart. Otherwise, he's a sixth place finisher. Here comes the river card. Well, the six arch comes off. Daniel makes the flush and takes down the pot. And EBJ has to say goodnight here at Palagio. Wow. What a call by Daniel Negrano right there. I thought I might have the best hand. <laughs> I saw this guy yesterday make a move with seven dudes off suit like that. With nothing, so I was like, joke. I mean, I really thought there might just be a chance he has nothing. You just don't suspect an amateur player is going to bluff his last chips when there's a $2 million first prize in a poker tournament. He did it there, and Daniel picked him off exactly right. <laughs> you are a sick man. That is the sickest call I've ever seen. I mean, if I was wrong, I had outs, you know? Joe says the rest of the table voted, and what was the vote? In consensus, Daniel is the sickest poker player alive. <laughs> it appears to me, frustration setting in. The big cheese is slowly melting away here, Mike. Action going to Robel, and he's got a real hand. Pair of tens. He keeps catching hands like this. He's going to be all right. I might call him the big rat that ate up the big cheese. He makes it 400,000 to go. Marquesi with just a seven, four diamonds. All in. Whoa. He's taking a shot, maybe at the wrong time. Under. And a quick call by Andrew. Well, not the time to move all in here. Oh, I got the unders. And Andrew Robo on the verge of taking down his first tournament ever. I like my side, to be honest. Diamonds are lucky. Which is hard to believe, as much money as he's won playing poker, that the guy's never won a poker tournament. Right now, in great shape to do just that. If the 210 stand up, Robo will be our champion. 7 4 diamonds, man. Diamonds are forever. William Reynolds. The adventurer, Big Cheese's friend, roots him on. He's gonna need a lot of help here, Vince. He is really in bad shape. Well, the flop comes up, ace, queen, six. I'm sure you're rooting for a sweat to Red five. That's fair. Tom Marchese must catch two runners to make a straight or two runners in a combination of a seven and a four. Otherwise, it's tapioca pudding for him. Yeah, the big cheese getting oh dear. sliced and diced right here. Guess I could have waited for a slightly better hand. Here comes the turn. 
The three comes oh. off, so he's still alive. There's a little hope. He can catch a five on the river and make a straight and win this pot. It's always a sweat. Uh, poker, right? It's always a sweat. There are out. You know, as long as it's not the five of spades, of course, because that would give Robo a flush. Uh, you know, Andrew Robo's thinking it's never easy. Why couldn't I close him out on the turn? If this five comes up, it would be another <laughs> Bellagio miracle. Here we go to the river. Will he hit the five? He did it! Unbelievable! He hit the two runners to make the straight. Tom Marchese lives on. Well, Andrew Robo can't swallow a BB right now. Hey! Reach out! Settle down. What a we? Unbelievable! That's wow. crazy. That's crazy, Mike. Unbelievable is right. No question about it. Lady Luck shining on Tom Marchese that day, and that's for sure. Unbelievable. He stays alive. Well, David Williams looks down at two deuces. He's going to raise it, makes it 500,000 to go. Eric Bowen has the ace five of hearts. And we just saw David Williams raise with ace high a minute ago after his opponent raised it. What will Eric do here? All in. Wow. He's gone all in. Pull, pull that in and give me a count, please. Well, David Williams wants a count. Folks, it's going to cost him about $3.8 million more to make this call. Vince, most poker pros do not want to call a monster all-in bet with two deuces because the best you're going to be is in a race situation where your opponent's got two overcards. They got the overpair, you're dead. Anything else, it's a coin flip as to who's going to win it. Mom Shirley in terror mode right there. She cannot bear to look. David Williams is the chip leader. He puts his opponent on two overcards. He may just want to gamble here to try to end it right now. What to do with two deuces here? Call. Wow, he's made the call. Vince, he is gambling here. The Mallards. Don't forget to the Mallards. <laughs> well, I think Eric very satisfied to see the hand his opponent has here. You want to run it twice? Run it twice? A little poker humor there. Now David Williams wants to run it once and win it once. It's almost a dead even coin flip. So luck, the key factor here. Eric needs to get lucky to stay alive. If David Williams gets lucky, he'll be the WPT World Champion for season eight. Well, not right there. An ace right on the flop becomes ace, seven, six. David Williams does not flinch when the ace comes out there. But right now, he's got to find a deuce somewhere in the deck. He might be kicking himself, saying, what did I call off my money with deuces for? Well, there's two cards to come. Well, he must catch a deuce, Vince. Nothing else will do it. Oh, there it is! It's over. He caught it on the turn, Vince. Lightning again for David Williams. He caught lightning to knock out Sean Buchanan. Are you kidding? He caught lightning to knock out Eric Baldwin. Vince, destiny on the side of David oh, Williams tonight. Man. Wow. Sometimes it's just your night. What else can you say about David Williams? You got to feel good for him. But you got to feel the pain for Eric Baldwin right there. David Williams, the WPT World Champion, just like that. It's on David Redlin, and finally picking up a nice hand, ace queen off suit. Raise. One eighty. And he's going to make a raise, going to one eighty, into Mads Anderson, who has a king jack. Does he want to compete? Nope. Daniel quickly folds. Jim Hanna not going to play his king seven, so the only one to beat is Joe Hashem. He's picked up the double skirts, pair of queens. Well, he knows David's the tightest player at the table by far, at least so far. But still, you pick up two queens in the big blind. You got to love it. This is a big old hand. Joe Hashem checking out the kid's chip stack. All right. Well, he's going to come over the top. He is going to raise. Let's see how much he's going to raise. 
It's a five hundred thousand dollar raise. That is pretty significant. Well, if the youngsters watch a lot of World Poker Tour action, Vince, you'll recognize the ace queen has been the kiss of death at the final table. Always a dangerous hand. We know that. But can he get away from this at this point? Come on. No, he's going over wow. the top. I'll call. And Joe has called him, Vince. Yeah. Well, the kid gambling, perhaps at the wrong time here, is tournament life on the line. Huge pot, nearly $3 million in this pot. Joe just slightly over two to one favor to take down this pot and eliminate the youngster from this tournament. Fold it nice. You folded nice, right? You folded nice. The notorious ace queen <laughs> that has been victimized so many times, so many different players. Can the young player get lucky with it right now? Got in through a $70 satellite, and it's all on the line right now. I can't look at it. Damn it, Joe. I, 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 don't, I, should, I almost folded it, man. Yeah. David Sandy should have folded it probably. Let's see if that's the case. Well, Joe Hashem can't even look right now. Here's the flop. Well, so far, so good for Joe Hashem. It's come 7 4 4. The two queens still the best hand. I can't, I can't, I can't. For David to win this pot, he's going to have to catch an ace, two running hearts, or two running fours. Right now, he's up against it, Vince. Well, he's over a 4 to 1 underdog right now to stay alive in this tournament. Let's take a look at the turn card. Queen, queen, queen. Let's go. Let's see the turn. Did you have to talk about the flush draw? <laughs> Oh, that ace comes right off on the turn. Oh, no. The three-outer on the turn. Joe Hashem is just sick about that card. Now it's not over. There's one queen in the deck. And the look on the face of Joe Hashem tells it all right now. Can this really be happening Without to me? That every time you do it to me, huh? He is sick and he is Without bitter. Time. He is surly. He is whining. But you know what? It's not over. He's got a one-outer. He's got to hit a queen to knock the kid out. He needs the miracle card. We're well, going to have to be lightning in the bottle, Vance. Only a 3% chance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Can you believe it? <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, my golly. A one-outer for Joe Hashem. Joe Hashem has won his pot. And eliminated David Ridley from his tournament. Wow. One time. Oh, man, he's hit the lottery <laughs> ticket. He has done it, and he's got a body bag. Oh, my golly. David Redland out of this event. Hey, don't be upset at me. <laughs> well, Vance, when he gets back home, he'll still feel the pain of this uh, hand. But in truth, he got in this tournament on a $70 satellite. He's taking home 253000 for his effort this week. Get out the smelly oh. salt. Look at him. He's walking away. That is crazy. Oh, That's insane. That's sick. I want to. That makes good TV. If you enjoyed that video, we've got heaps more on our YouTube channel. So check that out and hit the subscribe button for all our new uploads. And for on demand access to every World Poker Tour episode since season one, check out clubwpt.com.